Chang is one of the biggest names in the Bronx drill scene. He just started dropping music two years ago, but he blew up fast with tracks like Caution and Talk Facts and became one of the coldest rappers in the city. But right when he was about to become mainstream, he got hit with some legal trouble. And now, he's caught up in a massive indictment with 22 other members of the River Park Towers gang that could end his career. Here's what's going down. On Tuesday, May 24, the NYPD issued a 65 count indictment against the RPT YGs that included charges for conspiracy to commit murder, attempted murder, and more. That alone was bad enough, but seven members got hit with a separate indictment for a shooting back in 2020, and a third indictment was issued against five of them for allegedly jumping a crib in Rikers Island last year. Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark said, these defendants allegedly engaged in gun violence, committing six shootings, one which injured a rival gang member. They allegedly fired wildly on the streets without regard for the lives of anyone else. They allegedly possessed a gun using the shootings that they posed with on social media and rapped about the violence. The conspiracy indictment is the one that D-Thing is wrapped up in, and it's probably the most serious. New York State usually lets the feds handle cases like this under RICO, but a state conspiracy case is almost as bad for the dudes who have to fight it. It's usually easier to beat a murder case than conspiracy or RICO, because if someone you're affiliated with commits a crime, you can end up going down with them even if you wasn't directly involved. Aside from more serious charges, they also got hit with an animal cruelty misdemeanor. According to the indictment, a few RPT members was live streaming a pigeon and said it was like a crip who came to the wrong hood. One of them said, if we get 100 views, we'll kill it. And when they Facebook Live hit 100 views, they used a cane to beat the pigeon to death. RPT is a blood set that's linked to the Young Gunners or YGs, and this ain't the first time the cops have tried to take them down. Back in 2014, 20 RPT members was targeted in a huge investigation that shook up the whole organization. According to the 2014 indictment, the RPT YG started selling crack, weed, and other drugs in the area around 2010. They also engaged in robberies and acts of violence to assert the gang's stats. The River Park Towers complex has security guards that patrol the area and try to keep people from slinging drugs, but even they not safe from RPT. In May 2014, an RPT member named Faye started taunting a security guard and punched him in the face. This sparked a huge brawl between RPT and other guards, then the head of the gang pulled out a gun and threatened them. A dude named Meme was RPT's leader at the time, but he got replaced by a member named Fox after he got arrested for killing two people in carjackings. What's wild about Meme is how much work he was still putting in even though he was running the crew. He could have just sat back and collected the bread from everyone else, but instead, he went out and hit his own licks, which eventually earned him a life sentence. According to court documents, a dude in Meme's crew named Tommy Smalls snitched and testified against him. Smalls told the court that in August 2014, Meme wanted to rob a McDonald's. So Meme, Smalls, and two other dudes met up and made plans to carjack someone and bring guns to use in the robbery. That night, they got a cab and told the driver to go to an empty dead-end street in the Bronx. Meme pulled out his burner and told the driver to get out, but he refused. Then Smalls dragged the driver out of the car and Meme shot him in the back of the head. They left his body in the street, then used the cab as a getaway car when they robbed a convenience store and a Dunkin' Donuts later that night. Meme and his crew killed another cab driver a week later, but the plan went sideways and they couldn't use the car for another robbery. A surveillance camera caught them dumping evidence in the dumpster, and the cops found a pair of gloves they traced back to the crew. Smalls and the two other dudes all pled guilty, but Meme took it to trial and ended up with a life sentence plus 34 years. Everyone in the gang paid Meme for permission to move weight, but clearly, they was careless about who they sold to. The indictment lists over 30 times that dudes from RPT sold crack, weed, and other drugs to undercover cops. The 2014 crackdown obviously ain't work, because it looks like RPT never slowed down. This also ain't the first time D-Thing has had trouble with the cops. On November 11, 2021, he was put over with three other dudes and the cops found a loaded pistol with the serial number scratched off. D-Thing got hit with a second degree weapons possession charge and sent to Rikers, which definitely won't help him in this new case. New York is cracking down hard with gun charges right now to try and slow down the violence. During the pandemic, shootings rose by over 160% compared to 2018 and 2019, and the rate is still climbing through 2022. D-Thing already got a long rap sheet for drug and weapons charges, so it's probably going to be hard for him to get out of this without jail time. D-Thing grew up in the River Park Towers, so linking up with the YGs made sense when he hopped in the streets. After spending most of his life in the trenches, he started dropping music in 2020. According to D-Thing, him and his homies started the whole Bronx drill scene, but others say Ron Suno kicked it off when his track Pinocchio blew up in 2019. D-Thing is also related to one of the scene's hottest rappers, K-Flock. But K-Flock claims Sevsai, which is a gang that beats with the YGs. So even though they blood cousins, D-Thang and Flock are really enemies. Fans know about the diss tracks and shots they sent back and forth on social media, but they beef started with real violence. Back in July 2021, a rapper named Ty Swish was shot in the head and killed. People who knew him said he was a good kid. 
Fatai was allegedly from Sex Money Murder. And a few days later, they got their revenge by killing a 13 year old named Jerry and Elliot. Jerry wasn't even in high school yet, but he claimed to roll in 80s cribs and had already got arrested eight times for robbery and assault. Surveillance footage showed him walking down the street when a black car pulled up next to him. Then a masked man hopped out and started letting off shots. Jerry was rushed to the hospital, but later died from gunshots to the legs and chest. On the same day Jerrion died, a 16-year-old rapper named Rod G's got killed too. He was from the 800 YG's and allegedly made fun of Jerrion's death on social media. A few hours later, two shooters pulled up on scooters and shot Rod G's to death. Then a month later, Flock and D-Thing made their beef public and started sending diss tracks. K-Flock dissed D-Thing on the track Is You Ready, where he said, Boy, ask my ops, it could get ugly. I could do shh like Ice did Sonny. This is a reference to the movie Paid in Full, where a character named Ice sets up his nephew Sonny and gets him killed. So Flock made it clear that even though they're related, d thing can still get it. Then, a rapper affiliated with Flock named Nas Rolla was killed and d thing dissed him on social media. And around this same time, he clapped back at Flock with Talk Facts, the song that really made him blow up. It looked like the beef was just gonna keep escalating, but then both of them ran into legal issues that put their street activities on hold. First, d thing got hit with a weapons charge. Then a month later, k Flock got arrested for allegedly killing a dude named Oscar Hernandez outside of a barbershop in Harlem. According to the police, Flock walked by the shop's open door and asked Hernandez what he was looking at. Then the two got into an argument that ended with Flock pulling out his burner and killing Hernandez with a shot to the net. Some fans thought this might be the end of Flock's career and freedom, but he recently posted an update on social media that makes it look like he could get out soon. Back in March, Flock posted a video on Instagram that showed a New York City correctional facility and a photo of himself with the caption, all good, don't believe the blogs or the internet, everything trendy, forever DOA. He made the post just a few days after he hired Jeffrey Lichman, aka the lawyer who represented El Chapo during his US federal trial. So with one of the most powerful lawyers in the world on his side, it looks like K-Flock might actually get released soon. Unfortunately, we can't say the same thing for his cousin D-Thing. It ain't clear what the cops think D-Thing actually did, but since he got hit with a conspiracy charge, he could end up behind bars for something he ain't even do. The district attorney's statement says, according to the investigation, the defendants agreed to engage in acts of violence, including murder and the assault of members of rival street crews. So if the murder and other serious charges stick, all 23 of the RPC crew could get hit with life sentences. According to the indictment, the conspiracy case involved seven different shootings and eight gun possessions. And one of the guns the cops recovered was linked to three shootings that dudes in RPT talks about on social media. The second indictment was also for a shooting in 2020 where seven RPT members allegedly let off 11 shots into a building and barely missed hitting the op in the head. But D-Thing ain't a part of that case. But another thing working against him is the fact that he's a drill artist in New York. New York's been at war with drill music for the past couple of years, and the district attorney in D-Thing's case is still trying to fight it. In the statement he made after the RPT indictment was issued, he said, I am calling on rappers from the Bronx to stop using music to encourage shootings and use it to better the community. I am asking to have a summit with aspiring rappers and the rap stars who come from the Bronx, record companies, radio stations, and social media so we can find solutions to prevent further violence. Hopefully, D-Thing gets a good lawyer who can help him out of this situation. It's unclear what the cops think he did, 